Vizzletolo's mood had not been at its best of late, what with the departure of Nyssa, and soon after, Tegan. Despite the array of arguments he and Tegan had shared, he had grown appreciative of her company. It's not as though the Doctor wasn't kind, he was, but he didn't provide quite the same challenge of wit Tegan had possessed. To add salt to his proverbial wound and his ever morose mood, the duo had landed on a planet completely enveloped by a vast forest. Trees, trees and more trees as far as the eye could see. The forest itself seemed to literally be teeming with life, the greenness of the leaves, the warmth of the sun billowing from above. And yet, Turlo felt uneasy as a static charge ran up his spine. The Doctor had briskly sauntered off into the trees ahead, while Turlo had loitered near the TARDIS, not unlike a small puppy with its mother. Loose leaves rustled underfoot as Turlo attempted to traverse after the Doctor, hoping to find him, his school uniform clinging to his pale skin. Turlo thought back on everything he'd faced and experienced up to that point, including, but not limited to, Daleks, Cybermen, Tractators, Sea Devils, Silurians, the Malice, and even the Black Guardian, not to mention the actions he undertook while under his influence. No sooner had he reached the foot of a particularly large redwood than his eyes fell upon the doctor's hat strewn amongst the roots, along with several drops of red. Doctor Who Short Stories The Silent Forest Despite his parched throat, Turlo gulped, his electric blue eyes widened, and his pallor blanched more so. A deep, cold sweat permeated his forehead, and that same static charge from earlier intensified on the back of his neck. His widened eyes fell upon the doctor's hat again, and the few drops of red, his thoughts running wild at what may have happened. Was the doctor struck from behind? Did he stumble on a route and hit his head by accident? Who took him away, if anyone? Too many questions. Not enough answers. Turlo's heartbeat was thumping heavily, as though his heart was literally demanding escape from his scrawny body. With hesitation and a flicker of fear, he reached down his thin-fingered hand and scooped the doctor's hat from the forest floor, both of his hands trembling aggressively. This feeling he'd only felt twice before. The first, when he'd fallen into loyalty to the Black Guardian and felt his full power, and the second, when he and the Doctor had encountered a trauma from his childhood in the form of the Tractators. In both instances, he felt so foolish, almost like a terrified child hiding under his bedclothes just wishing the monsters to go away. This time was no different. Turlo felt cling tightly to the Doctor's hat. Peering down at the drops of red, he spied a sort of trail working its way through the trees, and despite his growing fear, he followed it with intensity. An intense pain shot through the doctor's head as he opened his eyes to gaze at the wooden ceiling above him. The last thing he remembered was kneeling down to examine one of the trees, followed by the expansive darkness of his unconscious. No sooner had he gone to rise and more pain shot through his head than a gruff, almost wild-sounding voice shot from his far right. Don't move! You are not well! The doctor slowly maneuvered his head in the direction of the speaker but could barely make out more than a silhouette against the light pouring in from the opening. What happened to me? He asked, returning his gaze to the ceiling. Fault of me! The speaker replied, turning away from the opening. Me be alone for too long. Thought me was only one left. Me saw you and threw stone. See you no threat to me. Bring you back to home to heal. Me sorry. The doctor's eyes fell upon the face of his captor, and a deep solemnness arose within as he took in every feature of this youth. The soft grey eyes, the fair silver hair, the coarse sandy skin lined with scars, the tattered MacGyver clothing, as well as the small intricate pouches attached to the makeshift belt. This youth couldn't be more than fifteen at most, and yet held the stance of someone twice that age. What is your name? The doctor gently asked, trying his best to hide the sorrow he felt for this youth. Me, Silver. You? The doctor winced at the pain in his cranium. 
Most call me the Doctor. Doctor. Me like. The deeper into the forest Turlo went, the fiercer his fear grew. But he knew he just had to find the Doctor. Who else could fly the TARDIS? A shiver ran down his spine as he stumbled across a nearby clearing, surrounded on all sides by large conifers. Carefully stepping forward into the clearing, Turlo couldn't help feeling something was very wrong. Not just about the area where he now stood, but the entire forest itself. It was literally brimming with life, and yet something still wasn't right. His eyes shot around in all directions, as though he felt he was being watched, and yet no one was there. His ears were pricked up, focused on catching any sound he possibly could. His heart skipped a beat as the realisation suddenly hit him. He couldn't hear anything. No wind, no cries of birds or any other form of creature. Not even the chirrup of crickets in the undergrowth. The forest was literally living and breathing alone with no other life around it. Turlo began to worry if he would ever find the Doctor in this vast place. His anxiety only intensified with a sudden snap right behind him. He had been so focused on the fact there was no other life in this forest and the sheer silence around him, he hadn't thought of natural sounds of the forest itself. He swiftly turned with fright to where the snapping came from, his face paler than ever, praying he wouldn't have to defend himself. As the Doctor traversed the forest with his new friend in search of Turlo, he couldn't help wondering more about this world they landed on. Silver, up until now I haven't said anything, but I must ask, why is this planet so quiet? Silver paused in his steps and turned his gaze to the Doctor. Always like this. Long time. The Doctor's brow furrowed. You said that you thought you were the only one left. Why? Silver's face grew dark. You ask too much. We find friend, you leave forest. The doctor stumbled back slightly, watching as Silver almost grew a foot or two in anger. Silver turned his gaze forward and powered through the trees with the doctor close behind him. Underfoot, a twig snapped as the doctor struggled to keep up with the vast, paced youth leading the way. It wasn't long until he found himself looking upon a vast clearing, and not far within it, the pale form of Vizsla Turlo, his school uniform having seen better days. Turlo gasped as the doctor came out of the trees, a small pink mark on his head and a face of pure joy. Turlo! The doctor cried, approaching his gangly friend. Turlo couldn't bring himself to speak, but a subtle smile began to curl on his ghastly face, his pallor making his hair look like it was on fire. The doctor extended his hand to the poor, frightened young man in the hopes of reassuring him. Turlo fought back his relief and carefully took the doctor's firm hand in his own two clammy ones. You have no idea how long I've been looking for you, doctor. Turlo finally blurted out, his relief breaking through his pale shell. What happened to you? The doctor's gaze turned to the coarse youth behind him, his free hand directed towards him. A misunderstanding with young Silver here. Silver's demeanour changed instantly, becoming more weathered than before. Friend found! Now, Doctor, you leave! Silver's hand, resembling more of a claw, pointed directly at the blue police box which now stood beside him. The Doctor and Turlo's eyes widened at Silver's new appearance and fiery gaze. Without hesitation, the pair scrambled towards the TARDIS and entered without another word. As the ancient engines droned into life, the Doctor and Turlo shared a confused but terrified look. What on earth did you say to him, Doctor? Turlo asked, raising an eyebrow. The Doctor, carefully adjusting the controls, thought carefully about his answer. I don't know. All I asked was why he thought he was the last one. The Doctor paused as a sudden realisation shot to the forefront of his mind. Turlo, how good is your Latin? Turlo's brow furrowed. Not very good. Why? 
The doctor's own brow furrowed. I really should talk to Lethbridge Stewart about your schooling. Our young acquaintance on the world we just left. His name, Silva, is the Latin word for forest. The pair of them stood in silence as the TARDIS continued its path through the vortex.